Okay, uh, welcome to my talk. Uh, my name is Karl Voigt. Uh, you can find more of this content if you like it on my webpage, and you can find me at Mastodon on this URL and on Twitter. There is a cross poster actually, so Mastodon is my main account. Meanwhile, um, on the link below here as well. So I'm gonna talk about um, don't contribute anything relevant in web forums like uh, Reddit, Hacker News, and so forth. Uh, and before we go into detail, of course I have to tell you what I actually mean with this probably problematic title or not. You will see. So uh, typical, typical uh, properties of web forums, as I understand it, in this context of this talk are. Uh, for example, um, readers and or contributors, this differs, need a site-specific account to be able to read or contribute. Or, for example, it's hard or impossible to extract content from uh, the platform of any kind. Or, um, most of the times, those platforms are owned by private um, companies and therefore follow the rules of the companies and not uh, some community rules or whatever. So this is what I mean with web forums. So in, in, in this talk, web forums is probably a broader uh, um, term that usually web forums are used. Uh, like I would not say web forum for Facebook, uh, for example, but in this context, uh, I do mean also uh, pages like uh, Facebook. So I have further examples here, uh, Reddit, Hacker News, Slashdot, Facebook. You get the idea what I do mean here with web forums. Of course, there are many, many more. And if I am uh, overusing the example of Reddit here in this talk, it's just because I'm only on Reddit from those web forums. So I personally have experience with Reddit. I don't have a Facebook account. I don't have a Hacker News account, slash book, uh, slash book account, and so forth. So if I'm uh, using the Reddit example, it's because that's the only web forum of this list uh, that I regularly use myself. And the other part I have to explain is relevant. So when I'm switching to um, this slide, I have here on the left side example content like cat content, anchor rent about food prices, gossip, how to look pretty videos and so forth. That's one type of content that is probably relevant to many people, but if we compare it with the right hand side here, uh, with helping people to solve problems, big or small problems, do it yourself project descriptions of all sorts, uh, or for example, convincing politi politicians that climate change has the potential of killing our society or even the whole human race. Well, in my opinion, these are at least two different kinds of contributions. Uh, the left-hand side is not irrelevant, probably, to uh, some of us, uh, because they, they are funny, yeah? they, are, they make our lives happier and so forth, but uh, the thing is, uh, when the thing on the left-hand side um, um, is, is not accessible, today's uh, contributions are not accessible in a year or so, this doesn't really matter because there is so much new content of cat uh, content and gossip is, is too old uh, one year from now and so forth. And there are new fashions to, to look pretty and so forth. <coughs> But I do think that the contributions on the right-hand side, the examples of contributions of uh, the right-hand side, are more relevant. So this is how I defined relevant in the context of this talk. And I'm going to talk about the right-hand side only. Okay? So uh, this is for you, dear contributors to the knowledge of the human race. Uh, this is not about gossip content, this is not about jokes, this is not about all the fun stuff that is on the internet as well. Uh, in my opinion, it doesn't matter if the fun stuff, cat content and so forth is on platforms that may be gone in 5 to 10 years, but I really do um, uh, like to emphasize that uh, important contributions that may have people also in 5 to 20 years should be on something accessible on, on a platform that is available in the future as well. 
So my main uh, my main uh, message here is for relevant contributions, don't publish in web forums only. Okay. <coughs> so uh, the thing uh, that drove me to to this talk is uh, that I have uh, for for certain content, I have the feeling that we are putting books in the library of Alexandria, although we know that the library of Alexandria will be burned down in, let's say, 10 years from now. Uh, which is really a bad thing to see, because I see so many good contributions on, for example, Reddit all day, uh, because uh, bright people uh, contribute um, solutions to problems that pretty much will be around 10 years from now as well uh, in those forums. And in my experience, there have been uh, many platforms already which are gone. And uh, almost any content which has been published on those platforms is gone, uh, which is a pity for the relevant stuff. So, why are web forums, specifically web forums, are a bad thing? Uh, this is the main part of the talk, and I'm uh, mentioning a few issues that are, in my opinion, important to that topic. The first issue here is there is no backup and there is no distribution. Uh, when we take a look at, for example, the number of services Google alone has discontinued, or um, what, what's the term? sundowned, something like that, uh, it's 193. And in this number, there are a lot of services that were really, really popular. For example, uh, from my background, I loved to use um, uh, Google Code Search. Uh, this was really, really good and, and uh, working very well. And I was able to learn a lot from other people's source code. And I haven't found quite uh, something similar to that uh, until this day. O although I have to say that programming itself is not that important anymore for me that much. But it's a pity that this service was discontinued. Or um, what, what, was, what was the Google name, uh, the Google service name of the news uh, archive? Um, Google News. Google Groups, thanks. Google Groups uh, was a, a very nice service, was also discontinued. And those were not only services that were not uh, used by many people. Far from that. Uh, it probably was not in the same line of uh, strategic uh, services Google wants to provide in the long run. Therefore, the discontinued Google Wave, for example, it's not a platform, it's more a technology, but it, it had uh, really, really uh, much potential and was discontinued as well. So, nothing stays on the internet forever, uh, and there is something like uh, a lock-in effect. Uh, there is a good uh, Wikipedia page on lock-in effects of all sorts, and my personal goal for my own uh, personal information management is to avoid lock-in effects uh, wherever I can. And uh, you have to, to do it um, upfront, not afterwards, because when a platform, for example, was discontinued, you cannot uh, back up its content anymore. It's too late. So therefore, I consider this an issue. And there is a very good example for that issue as well. Uh, so whoever is as old as I am uh, probably knows uh, or remembers MySpace. MySpace was once the leading social network. So before Facebook, let's say, uh, it was bigger than Facebook and it was replaced prob probably by Facebook. And it had millions of songs, photos and videos. Uh, and uh, 2019... There was this message in the news where they said uh, we uh, had a server migration and we've lost 12 years of our content, whole content, and there is no, uh, it's not possible to recover it. Uh, we apologize for the inconvenience. And that's it. And there is nobody in the world who can do anything to recover this content. And this will happen in the future as well. This will happen to almost all all platforms, probably the majority of us will face the day where, for example, YouTube gets shut down. Just imagine what that would mean, or what that will mean, or Facebook, or whatever you name it. 
And there is an oatmeal comic which also summarizes an aspect of this. Uh, it starts on the uh, on the top with "Come over, I've got some neat stuff here." That's Matt's website. So there was a time in the internet when you wanted to publish something on the internet. There was no platform. There were only private websites or uh, university websites uh, or seldom company websites. That's it. No pa platforms. And then platforms arise, in this case Facebook, and this person says, actually, follow me over there. It will be easier for us to reach each other because due to the network effect and I can search for people, my schoolmates and so forth, uh, Facebook offered, of course, benefits uh, over to not having any social network at all. So people uh, were welcome on this platform. And then the person say, hey, I made some new stuff. Can you show it to, to my followers here on my personal website? And Facebook said, uh, door locks engaged and promotion uh, boost. This post for, ah uh, yeah, you, you can uh, pay some money and then uh, you can uh, advertise your website on our platform. So it's a locked, uh, a gated community actually. And content is only relevant when it's within Facebook. And everything which is not on Facebook actually doesn't exist or almost exist. Or it's hard to bridge the gap <coughs> if you don't want to pay money. So it's commercialized, of course. Uh, and this is a bad situation to have, in my opinion. Another issue I want to talk about here is uh, user interface dictatorship. Probably this is too subtle, uh, subtle for most people, but in my opinion, uh, although this is maybe a subtle issue, uh, it has uh, manifold uh, negative aspects we are probably not aware of, actually. So. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, global blindness numbers here. So in uh, uh, we have, this is from, I hope it's is a recent number. Oh, I forgot to add the year. Uh, but you can look it up yourself. So here is the website. Uh, and it says that we have uh, 32.4 million people in the world who are completely blind. Uh, and it's not just uh, the, the um, uh, third world, for example, in Africa. If we take a look on the US alone, and these are the numbers from 2016 from the US, the prevalence of visual disability, so it's most probably not only blind people, but also very handicapped, uh, visually handicapped people. We have 7.6 million people in the US alone which probably needs some special interface in order to be able to read your content. And you can be assured uh, the standard websites of Facebook and uh, whatever you name it is not optimized for those people. Because those people have very different special needs to be able to consume information on the web. For example, they need a higher uh, type of contrast or they uh, are uh, distracted by too much clutter like uh, advertisements or uh, v visually overloaded pages. Uh, they need alternatives to images, uh, the, the alt text of images, for example. <coughs> and videos, of course. Uh, they, they need special scaling opportunities so they can enlarge the text they are reading. They need different color contrast options they do not get with the usual interface. They need probably a text-to-speech interface uh, and the interface sh should be able to read the content itself. Uh, they probably need an interface to a braille reader, a braille reader, I don't know what's the pronunciation here. And uh, they want to easily navigate without visual clues layout, so uh, they have certain restrictions. You can imagine when they uh, use uh, an, an, an enormous amount of scaling, some navigational elements jump around in the layout and so forth, and then the navigation is broken for those people. Uh, if you want to learn more about those specific uh, properties, you can look up uh, W3C, uh, which is the Web Accessibility Initiative where um, uh, for um, 
um, web designers, uh, those uh, things are collected so that you have a certain uh, idea what to uh, respect in web design so that uh, all sorts of people are able to consume the content you want to provide. And yes, here are some examples of the most common errors on top billion homepages uh, for uh, people with, with specific needs. And yes, um, the, uh, if, as long as those people are not the majority, the web designers will probably not optimize uh, the uh, CSS of, of Facebook or whatever for those people or offer functionality to adapt the interface to their special needs. And this is only one example of many. <coughs> And therefore, uh, this is related to today's talk. That's a blog article from my webpage. Uh, therefore, it's, it's also a good idea that imp the information you want to transmit is in text form and not in videos, audio, images alone. Because when you remember the properties from the previous slides, everything which is an image can't be accessed from a braille reader, for example. Uh, or cannot be enhanced contrast-wise or something like that. It's not possible. So um, most of the time, for those people with special needs, anything which is not raw text is not accessible. Please help yourself and, and read uh, the article of the webpage. It's a, s um, a similar topic to this one, but I don't go into the details of that, uh, that webpage. Uh, I'm sorry, there's a typo in the, in the header. Um, so, <coughs> user interface preference and rendering should be made by the clients. That's important in order that specific needs can be accomplished by the end customer clients. What do I mean by that? So, if we have a certain type of information or text I want to provide to my readers, let's say the things I want to tell, that's the sentence I want to transmit for some kind of reason. In the next step, this simple text is enriched with a semantic meaning. So, as you can see, um, here is a paragraph that starts and ends. Don't be uh, irritated by the syntax. This varies from markup language to markup language. This is just an example. So, I select that, uh, I, I define that this is an, a paragraph and the word things I want to emphasize. That's it. So, there it, it's not reading bold, it's not reading italic. It's emphasized because this is the semantic meaning, meaning and not this should be bold or this should be blue or whatever. Because in the next step, the clients should be the instance who decides what is the best possible way for my current single users to provide the information. So in one case, it probably looks like that. So things is boldface. In another instance, for example, if especially if it's probably printed on paper, italics is more is better than boldface because it. it, it doesn't distract that much when reading. Sometimes you probably need a text interface where there is no bold or italic, so probably you want to emphasize with those asterisks before and after the word. Sometimes I want to have this, but bigger. Sometimes I want different colors, sometimes I want to different co uh, contrast and so forth. You get the idea. So it's the client who needs to be able to optimize the content for the, the one reader that is sitting in front of the computer. And this should be the way. And if, if those de decisions have been made by the provider of the platform on the top, then you cannot change it anymore. Or to a, a very uh, lower degree, let's say. So this is very important. Therefore, stick to raw text with semantics, of course, and uh, just like in a web browser, uh, when you scale a web page, um, the word wrap of a line is part of the things that the browser is doing and not the web server. One of the f many examples where HTML really is, is a cool thing. Okay? So, uh, other things I personally am um, very, very uh, angry about where, where people are accepting web forums, for example, is this. 
Uh, I have here some uh, arbitrary uh, thread on, on Reddit. It's not important, you don't have to read it. Uh, but the things I'm going to ask myself all day is uh, how to tell what I've uh, been reading already. So what, where is old content, where is new content? Uh, it, it's not visualized of any sorts. So if, if I'm, I'm, um, I'm reading a Reddit thread and it has, let's say, five comments, yeah? Um, an hour, and I read it, of course. An hour uh, later, I'm doing a refresh, and then it's 10. I have to reread the first five comments because they are in between, and of course, I need to remember what was their context in order to uh, realize uh, about the, the other uh, comments that have been replies to those comments. And probably one day after, there are 50 of them. And if I have 50, I have to reread the first 10 again and the first five again and again. And you get the idea. It's completely nuts, in my opinion, because there are much better possibilities to avoid this situation. And this is probably the main reason why I'm really not happy with uh, web forums at all. <coughs> the next thing, how to tell what articles are relevant to me. There are op uh, there are, I, I will come to examples later on where I show you what are what possibilities possibilities are there where you can um, have uh, support in deciding whether or not a certain article or comment is relevant to me. We come to that later on. Here I cannot tell uh, other than uh, probably the numbers of upvotes. But this number of upvotes must not uh, uh, be my personal opinion. For, of for, for example, if there is something that is um, causing, um, uh, uh, or many people find it uh, uh, abuses or something like that, uh, but not for me, then it's downvoted. Although this content may be relevant to me. I don't know. <coughs> so the next thing, how to use this with my keyboard only. Um, well, that's a personal opinion, so I prefer to uh, use as much uh, of user interfaces with the keyboard only, not with the mouse. Uh, you may have uh, a preference for mouse, that's okay, but man many web forums don't uh, uh, allow keyboard navigation. I have to say that I uh, found out that Reddit actually does have a certain uh, support for keyboard navigation, but this must not be true for all the other web forums. And everyone is different, of course. So if, you, if you're using five different web forums, then you have to remember five different ways of uh, using them with your keyboard. That's, that's stupid. <coughs> so that's, that's one issue with the user interface dictatorship. Then the next one is uh, rule monopoly and subjective censorship. So what does this mean? Here is an example. Uh, this is from Reddit, from the privacy uh, subreddit. So it reads privacy and, remember, freedom in the information age. Uh, I was very happy to find this group of people because it resonates with uh, certain aspects of my life. And therefore I was posting there, uh, hello, uh, what is it? It's okay to put personal data in the public cloud. And I wrote a great article, in my opinion, where I uh, summarized the decision tree you have to follow in order to know that you are in a situation where the cloud, putting your personal data in the cloud is okay. Of course, with the, uh, with the, with the mindset that people should be aware that there are negative things they have to take into account they are not aware of before reading the article, okay? But that's, uh, yeah, this, this was my contribution. And if you have good eyes, you can read, sorry, this post has been removed by the moderators of privacy. Because uh, this is the uh, auto moderator message I received. The submission uh, has been removed as it is a site that reblocks articles. So uh, I probably uh, was uh, did not refer to rule number three, don't engage in self-promotion. So if I'm writing good content of my personal web page where I don't make any money, there is no advertisement of my web page of some sorts, uh, then I'm not allowed to repost it on this platform. Although it is freedom in the information age. <laughs> Hooray! 
yeah, I don't like this policy at all. And yeah, censorship and local rules. You have to remi be reminded that rules or uh, the way of thinking is always influenced by your current social situation. So for example, in the US, as far as I know, it's totally okay uh, to promote Nazi stuff because there they value the freedom of speech higher than um, the aspects of being a Nazi as in Germany, Austria, probably whole Europe. <coughs> there is uh, child pornography, probably most uh, countries would say child pornography in um, Japan uh, where it's totally fine for them because they have certain rules that are not um, they are not very similar to our rules. We can discuss this topic outside of this room, of course, but we would say this is child pornography. For them, it's okay, for us, not. How do you follow that in a global network, for example? Nudity. I, I don't have to say you, uh, the, in the US, uh, there is, uh, you, you, you cannot show a, 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 a nipple or something, you, you get a gate if you show a nipple. <laughs> Where probably in, in, in Europe, uh, we are more relaxed with nudity. Or in, in the other way around, they don't have any issues at all with uh, really, uh, really strong violence. I was in the US uh, in 1996, something like that, and I remember they've had a, a TV show. Um, I think it was Final Justice where uh, real-world um, crimes were shown, or there, there was a CC cam, a CCTV camera, uh, where, s where probably a, a guy was shot. And they showed this video footage on this primetime show, and I was completely shocked to see something like that. Uh, and it was perfectly fine for them. Uh, it was uh, hard to grasp for me, at least. Uh, we have in, in Europe, we have a different point of view on, on those type of content, I hope. Uh, socialism, uh, that's probably more related to the, uh, what was it, McCarthy area, area in, in the US, where it was uh, almost uh, impossible to, to be some sort of fan of socialism at all, because this was the, the devil and so forth. And so you see, it's different in time, different in location, different in societies. So what are the censorship rules you have to follow? It's very, very hard to do so, especially on centralized platforms. So the next uh, issue I want to show is user account hurdle. Of course, if you require an account to read all those things or to contribute, uh, you cannot uh, partici participate on this platform without an account. Sometimes there is no access at all with an account or closed source app. Um, yeah, that's the way. Uh, this uh, is probably a, a mitigation for that issue. So many platforms started to use login with Facebook, with Twitter, with Google, with Apple, you name it. Um, that's Yes, that may solve the issues of the account hurdle, but you get instead an issue with privacy. Because then Facebook, Twitter, Google knows what stuff you're accessing when using their credentials to access a web page. <coughs> so surveillance and privacy issues when you use this option. Uh, another thing here is um, accessing in this case, the Emacs rated community on a desktop web browser looks like that. No surprises there. Uh, you see, I'm not logged in, but I can read the content. Don't need an account to read. However, when I open up this very same URL on my mobile phone, I see this. Nothing at all. I have no option on using my mobile browser to read, not to contribute, to read on Reddit. The only option here is view an app. So it's non not existent on my phone as long as I don't use their app. Uh, and this happens more and more. Um, this week I learned that I cannot uh, read a thread on Twitter for longer than, let's say, 
one and a half screen pages, something like that. Uh, when I scroll down, I get this, please uh, activate yourself, your account, uh, register, whatever. Um, I, th I, I can't remember if this was the case a couple of months ago, uh, but uh, well, that's, that's the first step in that direction. So <coughs> let's do a quick recap. If we take into account the issues that we've been talking about so far, then we need something with open access for reading and hopefully also contributing. We need something that is text-based, where the, the most, most important message is also in a text-based form. We need something where clients should define the current information representation. We need Hopefully something like single sign-on or as few accounts as possible without having those privacy issues and surveillance issues. We need something with no login, hopefully. We need something which is easy to link, distribute, federate, backup, whatsoever, so that we can make sure that this information is not going away of some sorts. Okay, so what can we do? Of course, we can fix web forums. We can come out with yet another web forum. Of course, you have to make sure to replace all the others with that. And uh, some issues might get fixed by that approach. Uh, one common web forum standard needs to be defined, yet another standard. And companies need, of course, give away control. Good luck with that. I don't think that this is a viable option here, unfortunately. Okay, so what to do about that? Well, how about using alternatives that did the job before we had web forums? Yes, there are solutions that did the job before web forums. Uh, that's major technology that is around for decades and uh, is, is, it, it was quite uh, successful before we had those web-based platforms. So how, do the, how does that look like? We have some sorts of information, some arbitrary text, and usually we use the web browser to put it on one of those web-based forums, and some arbitrary reader is accessing those uh, web forums with his browser or her, her browser and to read the text. That's the thing we're talking about. So what alternative options do we actually have? Of course, there is always the option, organize yourself, your own web blog or web page or whatever. There are easy to use options to do that. You don't have to write your, your own blocking software as I did because it was fun to do so. <coughs> so you're using whatever you like to publish it on a, pu a, a public URL and other people are able to use the web browser to access your web content. And the story doesn't end here. Of course, you can always use this content and post it on those platforms with POSI or link back with PISOS. And those acronyms, they stand for Publish On-Site Syndicate Everywhere, that's the left-hand side, and the right-hand side is Publish Elsewhere and Syndicate to Your Own Site. So uh, this one is first publish on, let's say, Facebook, and then of some sorts link it back or copy it back or whatever to your own site. So these are the two options we have here. <coughs> and of course, there is, and I would strongly recommend that everybody is using this ty type of technology, uh, Atom or the RSS standard with a so-called RSS aggregator or feed aggregator so that uh, content of hundreds of different web pages is coming to you so you don't have to uh, visit those hundreds of sources in order to find out if there's new content for you waiting to be read. So in, in my personal life, I, I, I cannot imagine being an, an information-driven person without something like a feed aggregator. Um, because this is the way to go uh, to, to build my own information bubble, if you like. Uh, but the advantage is that there is no algorithm deciding what I'm not going to read. So, uh, 
Of course, personal blocks do not mitigate all the things I was going to tell you, uh, I uh, have been telling you. For example, personal blocks m go offline all the time, for example, or are not available and so forth. Uh, and of course, there is something that mitigates this uh, specific issue as well. There are probably multiple, but this is probably the most promising, in my opinion at least. Uh, so there is a web page called Web Archive, and they have a service called uh, w uh, Wayback Machine. Here's the logo, and it's uh, pretty much uh, unknown by uh, most people, I'm afraid. But they're providing a really cool service. Imagine you're visiting a web page, and you get the, the inform from probably your bookmark collection or from a link for another page, and you get the information. Uh, this site ha has been gone, or this is available uh, to be bought, uh, the domain, something like that. Okay, so bleh, you cannot access the content anymore. That's not true, because if you know the URL, just paste this URL here in this field, press the enter button, and then, if you're lucky, this service has uh, indexing that content and archiving for you in the past. So you can, um, um, for example, my blog page, every page of my blog has a direct link to the archive at the bottom, I think, yeah, at the very bottom. So you can go back in time and see how this URL looked, let's say, five years ago. Um, yeah, and you can do it with all URLs, and if it's not a gated community, another, dis uh, uh, another disadvantage of those gated communities, because they cannot be indexed by services like that. So if it's openly accessible, uh, there is a high chance that the Internet Archive was indexing this page. And yes, I would uh, urge you uh, to give them a few bucks here and then, uh, because I really do think that uh, it's worth uh, worth your your effort, your money, whatever. They they provide a really really good service. So, okay, we come back to this situation. You remember use an, an feed aggregator, and then we have now the uh, additional op uh, opportunity to ask the Internet Archive to uh, copy my web content and this person is able to access it with his or her web browser as well if there is something going on with that URL. And that's a good, good information to know, in my opinion. And there is something that I personally loved very much, or I personally love very much, which is called the Usenet. Who has heard of the Usenet or news? Oh, okay. So probably 50%. Um, but that's not uh, the average popul. Uh, uh, that's not comparable to the average uh, person in the internet. I, I'm afraid. So for the rest of us, uh, I have to say that uh, the Usenet or news groups and so forth was a collaboration of uh, different news group servers which um, provided the same content which was distributed among those servers. For example, this university has still uh, a, a news server, but only for the local uh, news groups. But my internet provider back then had his own uh, news group server where I could access thousands of different news groups from all over the world for all kinds of topics. <coughs> so. Uh, you probably uh, can think of posting this information uh, with any client, i come to that later on, to your uh, news group of choice where the topic is discussed in a broader uh, community and uh, more readers are able to use their web browser or specific news group clients to access the very same information here and this information is archived nevertheless because it's distributed, there are uh, indexes, uh, public indexes and so forth. And when I'm, I'm uh, referring to news group clients, the, the good news here is that there are many, many different news group clients out there. And so uh, the different representation of information is solved here, very elegant, because somebody might choose a, a shell-based client like I do, 
most people won't, of course. Some people want to use Thunderbird uh, up there. There's a screenshot. Some people want to use a web face interface. This is as an example of this university because they have a specific solution for web access to the local news groups. There are hundreds out there as well. And you will see here the very same test posting of, m of myself in three different uh, newsgroup clients with totally different user interfaces. And you can imagine if this works in this text-based uh, shell uh, or text window, then a blind people, for example, is able to uh, post it or direct it to uh, the Braille reader or something like that or enlarge it and so forth. So this is a, a perfect example of being able to allow the end user to decide how is the information represented on their side. <coughs> okay, and yes, there are tons of uh, Usenet news readers out there so that Wikipedia has its own page where they are all listed or a lot of them are listed on Wikipedia and you can choose whatever you like a mobile client for your mobile phone, a desktop client, a web-based version, and so forth. So if you need to use your web browser because you want to use your web browser, you can, of course, choose a web-based Newsnet reader as well. One of the many folds there are. So, I personally love the Usenet uh, because uh, I've uh, used it a lot. And uh, there are many, many advanced topics with Usenet which are far from being available on web forums. For example, scoring is one method where relevant content is pushed to the front. So with scoring, you can define keywords in subjects or uh, uh, associate scores for people or scores for um, keywords in the body and combinations, and all those scores are summed up or added up. Uh, and uh, uh, the score, the, the last score is the total number, and you can sort new messages by their score. So the top relevant messages are always on the top in my newsgroup reader, for example. That's very cool, because this is a method to follow uh, news groups uh, of some, so some community with hundreds of postings a week, a day, whatever, because the long tail, which is not relevant to you, is uh, has a lower score if you have a good scoring system in place. And I only read the most relevant and uh, then I can consume much more relevant content while ignoring the not so relevant content. Uh, federation details, I won't go into that details. Uh, Usenet hierarchies, there is an example here for the top hierarchies. So this is historical developed uh, a hierarchy of news groups <coughs> uh, binaries of binary news groups where you can post images or videos and and what what's uh, whatever you want to share there is there was once a thing called netiquette which uh, was a generally accepted way of commu uh, um, uh, of of posting on the usenet of communication and uh, People uh, with this set of rules, the Usenet was really, really good working. So we, we didn't have moderators of some sort for most of the time. Uh, and with uh, people following the netiquette, everything was really, really working good for many years. And of course, you can have local news groups and local servers uh, with uh, local rules. For example, the local, uh, the local news group News groups of this university had a no binary rule, for example. <coughs> so, this is one example, a personal recommendation of mine, to uh, mitigate many, many negative aspects of web forums while still being able to promote your own content, to contribute relevant content to the internet in order to stop dragging very, very relevant and interesting books into a library which will be burned down for sure. And therefore, uh, I want to also mention that this talk is based on a web uh, article of mine. So if you want to read more details about that content, uh, you can read uh, it on my webpage. 
uh, which is the basis of this talk, where I have many, many links you can follow uh, in order to learn more about that topic and my opinion on that. And this concludes my talk today. And uh, please remember, don't contribute relevant content in web forums only. Thank you very much. Do we have still time for some questions? Perfect. So, anybody with a question? Yeah? Uh, didn't the usenet die out, especially because uh, the content became accessible to more people and more people contributed to it? Yeah, yeah. So, the wasn't for it to begin with. so, the question was didn't the usenet die out? We can talk about that uh, because it was not accessible by people uh, without Usenet reader because people only uh, were able to use or had a web browser installed. Is that the question? For one, but the other issue is that Usenet in itself wasn't designed for the large masses of people that wouldn't keep two three things like the Netflix. So p he says that. Yeah, yeah, probably uh, the Usenet was uh, declining because people was not designed for a larger set of people not following the netiquette. Okay, uh, probably I don't know, but uh, w actually there, there you could establish a system of moderation somehow, where uh, on the one hand side the netiquette would be enforced by robots as well as humans. Depends on the rule. Yeah? For example, the rule no binaries please is very easily to be moderated by a tool. Uh, the, the <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can, of course, you can, uh, you can circumvent those rules if you are mean. But then uh, there, there is one thing in the Usenet, for example, which is called uh, um, ignore lists. So if if I remember this person was rude to me or uh, did not follow the netiquette, uh, I was able to uh, ask my client to ignore all postings of that person for a certain period of time or forever or give a certain negative score so that, th that those postings are not vanished but uh, uh, lower have a lower priority. So there are many issues with the Usenet. Yes, I think the main reason why we are not using the Usenet every day uh, is that uh, the, uh, the web browser was already installed and people did not have uh, an additional software to access the internet. Uh, and yes, it may sound a little bit funny, but I think this was the main reason. People would have required to install a separate piece of software they have not been aware of. And therefore, uh, web forums with offered a worse service were accessible for more people. So you 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 you're saying that people were uh, attracted by the web because it was more colorful and not only text. Yeah, that could is very much true, yeah. So there was one question I don't know which was first. Yeah. Okay, so he was referring to the fact, thank you, he was referring to the fact that he thinks that many people were drove away from, uh, from the Newsnet because uh, there are ways of accessing or uh, providing information on the web forums in an an anonymous way. Uh, well, actually, I think that's not true in my opinion because it's very easy to organize yourself an email account which is anonymous. Uh, with an arbitrary uh, alias. So you can s easily circumvent that, especially people who are very uh, aware of those things, in my opinion. But yes, probably the average person not, but I think the average person doesn't have those requirements, <laughs> unfortunately.
Yeah, so the, the question was, uh, the, uh, sh sh shouldn't I try to be where the people are and not where I am and dragging the people to the content, right? Yeah, for the point of campaigning for, for campaigning, for political issues. Yeah, you probably will be uh, absolutely right in, in the, with that respect because uh, political complain campaigning is a specific process I, i'm afraid so you have to go to the reach, uh, people and reach them yes but uh this also holds true for facebook and whatever um, and yes there is of course there's a network effect <laughs> if everybody would use the usenet then uh, campaigning would be in the usenet of course yes yeah Yes. What should uh, what should be uh, where should we put images and videos on the Usenet? Uh, first of all, you can link as much as you like. So you can link a YouTube video in the Usenet. You can link a video from uh, PeerTube in the Usenet. Uh, you can link whatever you'd like as long as a link in your Usenet post and of course on your blog uh, and so forth. Yes. I think it's disappeared also because of the spam issue. Okay, so uh, you can make your own Yeah. Mm. And I think that the same thing was quite difficult. Okay, so the the um argument here is uh, he thinks that the usenet vanished because of spam because everybody was able to spam only by using a fake email address to put spam into the Usenet. Yes, that's true, but this could be solved. Uh, why, why not use uh, uh, commonly shared ignore lists of known spammers, the which are curated so that uh, I'm not able to use uh, to add your email address into that list. That, that could be done. Uh, why not? Yeah. Or uh, adding m server uh, uh, moderators. That that could be actually a paid service by my newsnet provider. Yeah? I pay him to um, maintain uh, such a list which I consume. Why not? So yes, you, you, it's true that uh, uh, there was some spamming issues, but as far as I remember, I was not offended by that because they they were in my ignore list and never seen again. Okay, so uh, thank you for, for attending. The time is over, unfortunately. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, the, the talk. And of course, we can discuss the topics uh, outside afterwards. Thank you. <coughs>